Hello and welcome back finally to another episode of the Champions League Challenge on Football Manager 2022 where we are in charge of style Bucharest. Now since the last episode I've played all of our relegation stage games off camera and before we get into today's episode where we've got the final two games let's take a look at how we did in those matches off camera. Concordia Chiajna were the first visitors to Stau in the relegation group stage and they were doing well until Oliver Casey's bullet header from a Soren Serban cross gave the home side the lead in first half injury time. The game was all but over early in the second half as Federico Marchese played an incisive through ball to Milos Kukolj to give Stau a two goal lead. It wasn't completely plain sailing for the boys in red and blue though as Marchese found himself taking an early shower for a trip on Jeffrey Bunny midway through the second half. Stau did, however, manage to hold on, the game finishing Stau 2, Concordia Chiajna 0. An away game against fellow strugglers, CFR Cluj was next on the cards for Stau, but chances were few and far between, and things didn't get off to the best of starts, with Dragos Albu meeting an Adrian Pound free kick to open the scoring for Cluj. Stau defenders appealed for offside, but replays showed Albu was clearly onside. Cluj got their second just before the half-time break as Levente Nemeth played a ball across the six-yard box for Robert Vlad to volley home. The second half seemed to pass both teams by as the game ended 2-0 to CFR Cluj and Stau found themselves ever closer to the automatic relegation places. Top of the relegation stage table, Academica Clincini were the next visitors to a Stau side who had dropped into the automatic relegation places by the time their game kicked off. Things went from bad to worse for Stau halfway through the second half when Catalan Hlistai's free kick was met by a header at the back post from Deji El Arawi to give Clincini the lead. Thankfully for the home side, Tafari Moore's deep cross to the back post was headed in by Jovan Mitrovic less than 10 minutes later to steal a point as the game ended 1-1 a result which lifted Stau back out of the automatic relegation places. It was the first of two Bucharest derbies next up as Dynamo visited Stau. After what had been a relatively quiet first 85 minutes or so, there was finally some action as Mira went down in the box, allegedly tripped by Kokos. VAR had a look and the penalty was given. Andreas Kalkan confidently stepped up and dispatched the spot kick to give the away side the lead. Stau thought they had equalised soon after as a long ball from De Sommer found Kukolj, who played a ball first time across the face of goal for Emilian Patinel to tap in, but it turned out Kukolj was offside, meaning the game ended 1-0 to Dynamo, but Stau remained just outside the automatic relegation spots. The second Bucharest derby against Rapid came next for Stau, and despite Rapid's dominance in this match, they could count themselves very lucky at the method with which they got their opening goal. Diara playing free kick in to Berlicho at the near post. He hit the post, then Chenkum tried to pounce on the rebound, but was apparently tripped by Denos. It looked a very soft penalty, but after consultation with VAR, it was given, and Berlicho sent the keeper the wrong way to make it 1-0 rapid. Stau didn't mope around though, as they hit back 10 minutes later when Jeremy Van Mullum headed home from a Milos Kukolj free kick to equalise, meaning the game ended 1-1, and Stau edged a point further away from the drop zone. Almost relegated, Université de Cluj were next to host Stau and knew that anything less than a win would all but send them down. Things started well for Stau when Milos Kukolj played in David Min for the opening goal after a quarter of an hour and it got even better for Min and Stau just over 10 minutes later when David Min smashed in a first time volley from a Tafari Moorcross to make it 2-0. A first half hat-trick was secured for Min as Soren Serban crossed for Min to place the ball past the keeper at his near post. It did look like Cluj may mount a comeback early in the second half when Alexandru Buziuk scored his first ever goal for the club by heading in an Andres Vinial cross, but it wasn't to be as Stau held on for a 3-1 win and moved three points clear of the drop. It was a true relegation battle next for Stau as they visited the team sitting one place and three points below them, Université Cryova. There were plenty of chances for each side with the best coming for David Min who saw his 48th minute header saved by Edward Papp, but the game ended in a 0-0 draw, leaving Stau three points clear of the drop and only two points off jumping out of the relegation playoff places with two games to go. So two wins, three draws and two defeats leaves us, as I said, in eighth, three points clear of the drop zone, three points adrift of complete safety as well. We've got two games to play in this episode. Again, second place UTA Arid and seventh place Voluntari. That Voluntari one is going to be a big one. If we can manage to get anything against UTA Arid, that'll be a bit of a bonus. I'm not expecting to win that one, but hopefully we can get something against Voluntari and hopefully we can, at the very least, 
stay away from the automatic relegation place that Cryova currently occupy. So here is the lineup and tactic that we're going with for the first of today's games against UTR at away from home. We've got Tom Eager in goal, Tafari Moore at right back, Oliver Casey, Jeremy Van Willem and Vincenzo de Sommer are our central defenders today with Richard Jensen at left back. Marquesi and Gruso are the two centre midfielders, Denos on the right wing, Dragic on the left wing and Milos Kukolj up front. We're playing a fluid counter-attack, cautious mentality and hopefully we can get Arid on the counter-attack and maybe steal a point. As I said, not expecting much. Of course, I mentioned our form in the relegation stage so far. Arid are doing pretty well. They are unbeaten in the last five games. So as you'd expect with second in the table, even though it is the relegation stage table, they are going to be a difficult challenge. Throw in for Arid. Nessu takes it. We should win this. Van Mullen does. And now it's fallen at the feet of Marchese. And we could get on the counter-attack here if he finds a, a decent pass. Marchese running down the right-hand side of the field. He's running into danger, it looks like. Plays it back to, to Oliver Casey. And we can try and build something from the back once more as Casey comes forward with the ball inside to the centre of the field to Grosu. Now Marchese has the ball once more. Forward to Kukolj. Through ball to Denos. Denos with a chance. It's Claudio Denos. It's saved by the goalkeeper. That was a great opportunity, first highlight of the game, and we almost managed to get something if only Claudio Danos had better finishing. We've got a corner to Milos Kukolj to take it into the centre, but that's headed away by Petrina. Kukolj is going to get it back. Can he get a ball back into the box? No, he can't because the highlight ends there. A decent chance. We are being dominated in terms of shots anyway. We've got more possession than Arid, but they are. they've had more shots. Albeit they could have been from long range, I'm not entirely sure. We reach half time at nil nil. Decent. I would take nil nil at the full time whistle, but we've still got a lot of work to do. So I've not made any changes at half time. Everyone's looking pretty motivated and no one's doing too badly. Genos is our worst performer on 6.5. I'm hoping that was just because of his his terrible miss. Well, not terrible miss. He just missed his Sudito with a free kick, and that's wide. And thankfully, it doesn't go into the back of the net for UTA Arid. Now Jensen plays it back to the summer. Now Grosu. The centre of the field finds Milos Kukolj. No, he doesn't. He's in, it's intercepted by Itu, but then that clearance is just whacked off Kukolj and Dragici has the ball at his feet now and we can come back on the attack. Grosu plays it back to Van Mullen. Forward to Grosu. Grosu getting a lot of the ball here. Van Mullen once more. Bad touch from him and Arid could have an opportunity for a counter-attack here. Suditu running forward with it. Dishonor with an excellent challenge to win the ball though and Dragici plays that back to the left-back Jensen. He tries to beat his man, decides against doing that and plays it back to Dishonor. Which is very patient with this build-up play here. Dragici back to the centre-back to Sommer. Now Grusu once more in the centre of the field. I'm just looking for that opportunity to find a pass to someone in space. Denos has it on the right-hand side. Further right to Tafari Moore. Now can he run down and beat his man? He plays the ball forward to Denos instead. Denos with a bit of a big touch. Takes him out further wide than he would have liked. But Moore has the ball. Plays it in. Dragici with the header. And Dragici scored. Stefan Dragici. Has given Stau the lead to Farimu with the ball in. It's Dragici's second goal of the season. And Stau have an unlikely one goal lead against UTA Arid. To Farimu with the ball forward to Denos. Denos with a, a bit of an elephant touch, but he manages to keep the ball. Plays it back to Farimu, takes a touch, ball in, very deep. Dragici with the header, and it's an excellent finish. And we are 1 0 up. Can we hold on? Please say we can hold on. This would take us out of the relegation. Playoff places, if it stays like this. 20 minutes to go. I'm going to have a look, see how everyone's doing. Uh, we've got Oliver Casey looking nervous. I don't blame him. I'm quite nervous as well. He's also on a 6.5. Jensen's on a 6.5 at left back. I'm not a big fan of changing my defence, as I've said in many, many a previous episode. But the fact Casey's looking nervous is a bit concerning to me. Our only option at centre-back to bring on, though, would be Catalan Kokos. And he gave a penalty away in one of the previous games, so I'm not too keen to bring him on. At left back. To, if I wanted to take Jensen off, we've got Darius Murasan, but he's looking apprehensive. And then again, it would be Catlin Kokos. So I don't really think we've got many options. In terms of people's fitness, no one's doing too badly. Moore, Grosu and Dragici are looking a bit tired, but they're not, not really in danger of anything too bad yet in terms of an injury. So I think we'll just, we'll not bother making a change. And hopefully that doesn't go against us. Although now I've just had a message from one of my coaches to say Dragici is looking a bit tired out there. So I think it is time for Dragici to make way. He's on a yellow card. He's having a great game, but he is tired and I don't need tired legs out there. So Emilian Passinel is going to come on for him. 
And then Tafari Moore is another one I'm a bit concerned about. But again, it would be Kaplan Kokos coming on for him. So I, I don't want to do that. Into injury time. Please don't give us another highlight. Just end the game. Please. Full time. It's a win. It's a victory. A much needed victory against the team that I didn't think we were going to get anything at against. You say Arid. Go down by a goal to nil. Great defensive performance, judging from our ratings there. Tom and Egan, Tafari Moore on a 7.8. Excellent stuff. And... We've, we've managed to get the three points. And as I said during the game, that does, for a short time at least, take us out of the relegation playoff places. Rapid Bucharest and Voluntari are both still to play in this game. We can, can both still go ahead of us. Uh, we'll, let, we'll have to keep an eye on what their games are and how they do. But this is a great start to an episode where I was a little bit concerned and still am, touch wood that we might get relegated. Hopefully that doesn't happen. We're now definitely not going to get relegated automatically, I think. Although we're six points clear of Cryover, they've got two games left, so that's not definitely confirmed yet. But great results. Stefan Drakici is a hero. Let's see how Rapid and Voluntari do in their games. So the two teams that we are battling with for safety without having to play a relegation playoff are facing each other in this game week. Voluntari are at home against Rapid Bucharest. We've also had another team confirmed as automatically getting relegated. Universe Tatea Cryova losing to already relegated Universe Tatea Cluj by two goals to one. Which means it's relegation playoff places or complete safety. That's the only options for us. Which is a bit of a relief because I definitely didn't want to go down automatically. However, yeah, Voluntari are playing Rapid Bucharest. I think we want to draw in that one because that leaves Rapid Bucharest close enough for us to be able to possibly catch and Voluntari still behind us, albeit by a point with us having to face Voluntari in the final game of the season. Let's see what happens. And we get what we want. We get the 1-1 one, one draw. That does move us down technically, but still up in the entire match week to seventh place. <laughs> There is two points separating the final, well, the, the bottom relegation playoff place and safety. Concordia Chiajna could still find themselves getting pulled into this as well. They are only two points clear of the final relegation playoff place. It's between four of us to fit into two spots on the final game of the season. And for some reason, all games aren't played at the same time. So. Oh, this is going to get interesting. Rapid Bucharest are at home against already relegated University Tear Cryover. That's quite an easy game for them in theory. Cryover obviously getting beaten by bottom of the table Cluj last week isn't going to help them. Hopefully they get some sort of resurgence against Rapid. And then, of course, we're playing Voluntari, so we need to win that. But then the day after is Concordia Chiajna's game against CFR Cluj. So... We're gonna to have to wait an extra day to find out what happens, but it's gonna be it's gonna be very exciting, no doubt. So we're here. It is the final day of the season. It's not just the bottom of the table that there are things still to play for at the top. Farrell Constanza, uh, they're currently four points clear of Sepsi. They know that if they pick up a win against FCSB, they will be crowned champions. So we'll keep an eye on that today too. But obviously, the main focus is going to be on the bottom of the table. With as I've already said, us facing Voluntari. Rapid Bucharest rest in action as well. They could still get drawn into the, the playoff places. So let's see how we go. So a few changes made for this home game, this final game, hopefully, against Voluntari. We have the same goalkeeper and the same defence apart from at left-back. Soren Serban makes his way back into the side in that position. Centre midfield is exactly the same as the first match of this episode. Stefan Dragici has now moved to the right-hand side of attacking midfield with Emilian Passionel coming in on the left-hand side, replacing Dragici position-wise, but replacing Denos personnel-wise. And then we still have Milos Kukoc up front. I've realised I've done something that I seem to do quite a lot, which is a minimum of 121 Romanian players in the playing 11 isn't happened or hasn't happened, if I speak correct English. So uh, Katalin Kokos, a man who I did not want to bring on in the last game, is going to start today's game in place of summer so hopefully he doesn't make too many mistakes Darius Grusu is needing just 75 minutes of action I think he was meant to have that last time out as well and I just completely forgot to take him off so I'll try and remember to take him off this time 
Just looking at FC Voluntari's lineup, and there's one man that stands out to me. It would be Ion George. He um he's caused trouble for us in the past. Big game today, but you can tell that we have been struggling all season. Very, very few people in attendance, lots of empty seats at the stadium. Hopefully, we can give the few fans that are here something to cheer about. It's Jogichi with the ball in. Kokos is there with the head in Catalin Kokos. He scores. The man that I didn't want to bring on in the last game. It's going to go to VAR. He might be offside. Please don't be offside, Catalin. Please be on. Is he on? Dragici with the ball in. Kokos the back post. I'm sure he's on. He did not look offside to me. This could be uh, a 1-0 lead that we've just taken. We're going to see the lines here. And he's just onside. Catalin Kokos, the man who wasn't going to be in the starting lineup until I realised that I needed to have another 21 player in the starting lineup, has just opened the scoring for us. But Voluntari are on the attack. Through ball. Alorio. Is that saved or did that go wide? I think that went wide. Missed chance for them. Serban plays it to Van Mullen. Now Kokos, I've noticed on the league table, we are out of the relegation playoff places, but that is in place of Concordia Chiajne, who of course play their final game this season tomorrow, as that is a terribly misplaced pass. And Campbell comes away with the ball now for FC Voluntari. Ion George, the man... He went marked as a danger man with a lovely through ball to full up, full up, through on goal. It's full up. He's gone a bit wide and thankfully hits the post. Voluntari have woken up since that goal. They've had two chances in about three minutes. And there's a, a throw in for us just inside the Voluntari half. Serban to take it. Finds Emilian Passinel, nodded down to the goal scorer at Kokos. Now Grosu with a, a long ball towards Dragici. Looked like he could have been offside, but Dragici with a shot. And it's a great save. And I think he was offside, just Stefan Dragici there. So we've made it to half time. We are a goal up. We are currently outside of the relegation playoff places, if only for the fact that Concordia Chiajna aren't playing today. Rapid Bucharest are winning their game against University of Craiova by a goal to nil. But if Craiova get a goal back in that one, we will be above Rapid Bucharest and confirmed as safe from the relegation playoff places. But of course, we still have to do our job here. We that that is the first thing we need to do. Then we can hope and pray that Craiova somehow managed to get an equalizer against Rapid Bucharest. Milos Kukolj is not doing well today. He's on a 6.5. He's on a yellow card. It's a bit of a risk, but I'm going to take him off. David Min, of course, scoring a hat-trick in one of the games that we played off-camera in the relegation stage. Hopefully, he can do something similar today. Or even if he can't, he can just help us keep this one-goal lead because that's what we need. And that rhymed, and I didn't mean it to. But we're going to start the second half and pray. Corner for Voluntari. Ion George to the back post. Bilal's there and it's well held by Tom and Iga there. That was a difficult one to hold on to, but he managed to do it. He launches one forward towards David Min, who wins the header. Now Grosu, through ball to Dragici. Dragici's in some space. We could get a second here. Stefan Dragici with a shot and Dragici scores. It's 2-0. Third goal of the season. Stefan Dragici, what are you doing? <laughs> what a... Oh, I can't believe it. Grosu with an excellent assist. David Min. Just dominant in the air there to beat the defender to the header. Grosu with a beautiful three ball. Jogichi, I thought he might have pulled this just wide, but he hasn't. He smashes it past the goalkeeper. We're 2-0 up. Surely we can't throw this away now. And surely, well not surely, but hopefully, Cryova can get something against Rapid. Throw in on the left-hand side. Soren Serban finds Emilian passing out. It's a bad touch from him though. And Voluntari can come away with the ball with Pekrashaw. Now do so. Forward to Riccardinho. Full up. Riccardinho again. We really need to defend this. The worst thing that could happen is for Voluntari to score, get their backs up and possibly score two in quick quick succession. It's happened a few times to us in charge of Sao Bucharest. Hopefully it's not going to happen now. Petra saw with the ball on the right-hand side once more. Went to do so. Forward to Full up. Pulls it back to Petra saw. Surely they're going to try and get this ball into the box. We need to try and defend it. Petra saw Casey heads it away. And is David Min going to get there first? No, Fulop does. Riccardinho's got it to recycle play and start it once more for Voluntari. Ball forward, headed away by Van Mullen. Looking for Serban, but Petra saw and Serban is going to get sent off. That's what the highlight was for. It's a red card. So just to make things even more exciting, Soren Serban decides to stick a leg out and get himself sent off. And unfortunately... 
This means that we're, we're going to have to take our, our best performing player off. Um, Stefan Dragici is going to come off. We're making a formational change. Kukos is going to go out wide uh, at left back. Kukos can't play there, so that's not an issue. Dragici is going to come off. Vincenzo de Sommer is going to come on for him at centre-back. And then we're going to switch Passionel into an attacking centre midfielder. David Mins still has the advance forward up front. Uh, we'll stick. Passionel is the advanced playmaker on support. We're still on our counter-attack. Mentality, hopefully, with 16 minutes to go, we don't throw this away. Incidentally, Rapid Bucharest have taken a two-goal lead in their game against Cryova, so it's not looking like they are going to do us any favours. We're going to be reliant on Concordia Chiajna dropping points in their game tomorrow, but it's not over here yet. Petr saw the ball in, headed away by the summer, and David Min's going to collect that, but he's going to have to hold that ball up quite well to give his teammates time to get up the field. He does so, though, and finds the summer. Nice ball from him to Grosu. And we are on an attack. Grosu running down the left-hand side. Avoids the challenge of the defender. Gets the ball back from Kokos. Grosu inside to Marchese. Now Emilian Passionel. Back across to Marchese. Man in space on the right-hand side is Tafari Moore, who is found by the pass. Tafari Moore with a chance to get a ball in. Possibly. Pulls it up. Into Min. And it's a great tackle from Amir Balali there. He needed to make that tackle. David Min about to pull the trigger and probably send us into a three-goal lead, but it was a Good defensive challenge from the voluntary defender. Grossu with the corner in towards David Min. And I uh, don't even know if that was headed away. I think it just went over everyone. And there is the full-time whistle. It's a 2-0 victory against Voluntari. It's not... Things haven't gone exactly how we would have liked. A victory is, of course, very, very nice. But it would have been great if Rapid Bucharest could have lost. But, of course... Concordia Chajna, they could lose. They're facing CFR Cluj, who are top of the table in the final game of the season. And either way, we know we can beat Voluntari, who would be the side that we would be facing in the relegation playoff, I believe. I think that's how it works. I think we play each other and then we play the playoff winner from the second tier. Might not be remembering that right. I was mistaken. We actually play against one of the two sides that reach the playoff places in Casa Liga 2 if we if we do fall into the relegation playoff. So currently that's looking like either Chindia Targovista or FCU Cryover. Two teams that we have faced in the past. Two teams I think were that were in Casa Liga 1 quite recently. Yes, Chindia Targovista relegated just last season and FCU Cryover also relegated last season. So we've had our initial budgets come through just before we're waiting for this game between Cluj and Concordia Chiajna. Initial wage budget of 25k, that's just about what we're spending, what we've committed to spend anyway. And then transfer budget of 191k, I'd probably, I'll probably change that to get more wage budget, I imagine. But um, we, we need to see if our season's over yet or not. So it's time. Cluj, Chiajna, Cluj are at home. Hopefully that means they're going to win. I think a point... It's a point enough. How how did we do against Concordia Chiajna this season? Drew 2-2, two, two, lost 1-0, lost 2-0. So yeah, a draw is not enough. We need Cluj to do us a massive favour here. Cluj have done it. Cluj absolutely battering Concordia Chiajna 5-2. We're safe. We're safe. Just get confirmation. No need. For a playoff for Stau Bucharest. Sixth place in the relegation group stage. Concordia Chiajna falling all the way down from fifth to seventh in the final game of the season. And they will face one of the playoff finishers in Casa Liga 2. We are done for the season. No more games for us, thankfully, because <laughs> Soren Serban obviously suspended for the next match because of that red card he picked up in the last game of the season. And then Oliver Casey picked up too many yellow cards as well. So he was going to be missing the, the next match. So very relieved that we don't have to play anymore. And we've secured our status in Casa Liga 1 for next season. Hopefully next season we can push on and get up the table and not have to fight relegation again. Elsewhere, I realised I didn't actually come back to this, but Farrell Constanta have been crowned champions. They are four points clear of Sexy. I think they only managed to do it because because of... No, they must have won. Did they win the last game? No, they drew. They drew 1-1. One, one. 
And then what did Sepsi do? Sepsi drew 1-1 as well. So that's how Farrell Constanza managed to win the Casa Liga 1 Champions Playoff. And CFR Pluge qualifying in the European place. I think it's only top that gets that. Top two. So it's Cluj and whoever was second, who is Dynamo Bucharest, who are going to bat them off in the European places playoff. Just while we're waiting for the end of season review to come up, I uh, may have um, made a, a, a transfer. Dennis Radu. He is a right winger. He looks pretty decent. Uh, yeah, but we've got Dragici there already, of course. Danos can play there too, but a bit more depth. And think he looks a decent player for the future and for the now to be fair to him coming in as a squad player we have signed him for a fee 39k um a bit of extra add-ons as well league appearances and percentage profit from next sale oh, he's on 700 pound a week squad player for next season let's see how he does so the champions playoff has now ended they play 10 games so they finish their season a week later than us in the relegation stage and we already knew Farrell Constanza had won the league, but Sepsi have finished second, qualifying for the Europa Conference League. FCSB have also qualified for the Europa Conference League. I think that's through them winning the Romanian Cup. And then the Liga 1, Liga 2 playoffs have been set as well. It's going to be FCU Cryova against Concordia Chiajna and Voluntari against Chindia Targovishta. So we'll see who will be joining us in Casa Liga 1 next season very, very soon. Here we go, finally, end of season review for Stau Bucharest for the 25 26 season we'll take a look at transfers first and transfers in are our first port of call so we'll arrange by average rating which it already was so darius gross you are our best average rating albeit from only seven starts one sub appearance one assist for him he's he joined us on loan from farrell constanta so a very good deal um looked to be very good value for money according to the board at the time and it was very important assist, actually, that one, if I remember right. I think that was in one of the games that we literally just played. Then we've got David Min, who is the star signing, I'm assuming, is what the star means. It is signing of the season. I should know that after all these years of playing football manager, but I guess I don't. David Min signed in from RKC, a while week, 15 starts, 11 sub-appearances, 8 goals. Very nice. That hat-trick, of course, in the, the games that I showed you at the start of this episode were, were decent. And then Tafari Moore, another solid signing from Hendon, a non-league team in England. 31 starts for him, one sub-appearance, three assists, 6.91 average rating. Federico Marchese, another solid one, 30 appearances for him, 6.89 rating, two goals, four assists. Oliver Casey signed from Blackpool for just £10,000. And the board were happy that we might make some profit on him if anyone ever wants him. 240k release clause but he solid solid defender for us this season one goal but that's not what he's there for Richard Jensen another solid loan sign in 17 starts seven sub appearances at left back mainly a little bit of centre back in there Soren Serban 80k spent minimum fee release clause also made the board very happy they like to one of the club visions is to buy players so that we can sell them on for a profit so this of course by putting those release clauses in there, that kind of makes them happy. So 80k spent on him from FC Arges, and he played 31 times for us. One goal, two assists, decent. Not great, but decent. Darius Murasan, not so good. From Concordia Chiajna, we got him in for free and played four times, three off the bench, 6.49 average rating, pretty bad. Lucas Urea, another one, the centre-back brought in the youngster. Um, it's proven to be a bit of a disappointing transfer. He only started three times, five appearances off the bench, but when he did play, he didn't play well. But that could arguably be for both of them because they weren't getting the game time. Now for outgoings, Goran Lonshaw went to Radniki Nish. He's uh, he's played 14 times for them. He's got a decent average rating of 7.17, two assists. And the board was satisfied with our decision to release him. We sold Albert Popper for £28,000. He was our backup goalie. Board disappointed that we sold him. And that there wasn't any future fees included in that, but he wanted to to leave, didn't he? Wanted first in football. We couldn't give it to him. 25 appearances he's made for Universal Botia this season, 6.88 average rating. Juan Bruno, again, another man that's been released. He went to Estrella, Vendas, something or other, Novas, played 34 times for them, 6.74 average rating, one goal, four assists. Board were happy to see him go. And then Bogdan Chapurlu, who of course had helped us so much in the past. We decided to release him. He was getting on a bit. He wasn't as good as he used to be. And he's there's no data available for Bogdan. 
We had Ayub Abu out on loan as well. The board weren't happy with our decision to loan him out, but he wasn't as good as I was hoping he was going to be when he signed for us. So 42 appearances made for Renaissance. Zemamra got there eventually. Two goals, five assists, 6.6 average rating. That's the transfers. Now to have a look over the season. So of course, we finished sixth in the relegation stage just at the end of the season. The board were delighted that we staved off relegation. So... They're happy about that. And then in the Cup, we finished in the fifth round, which is disappointing because the board were expecting us to reach the sixth round. So we, in fact, we only played one game in the Cup and that we lost to Gazmetan. So they weren't happy, but they understood because we had a difficult draw. Moments to remember, our biggest win was against Academica Clinchini, a 3-1 victory away from home against them. The match to remember was apparently the 0-0 draw against University Tear Cry Over, which I think, if I remember rightly, is the one that had lots of chances where David Min headed and it was saved by their goalkeeper. But I don't know how that's a match to remember. Goal of the season came from Halep in a game against Sepsi as well. Financial-wise, we will not take too long on this one. Sponsorship is up from last season. Everything else is down, probably because we didn't reach very far in the cup this season. I think we managed to get quite far last season, but that seems like ages ago now. Shirt sales, top selling shirts were Jagichi, Kukolj, Badea, Min, and Mark Hazy. Our average starting lineup was a 5 2 3 formation. Tommy Nier in goal, Moore, Van Mullen, Casey, De Sommer, and Serban in defence. Badea and Mark Hazy in centre midfield. Mitrovic and Jagichi as our wingers, and then Kukolj up top. Now, in terms of awards, I won the Manager of the Month award for August. At, that's a long time ago now. Obviously, things got worse as the season went on. Fans player of the season is Jeremy Van Mullum. Young player of the season, Claudio Danos. Signing of the season, David Min. Goal of the season, Dinsu Halep. We've already been through both of those. Top goal scorer was Kukolj with just nine goals. Dragici got the most assists with eight. David Min getting the most player of the matches with four. And a high suffered rating as well for David Min on a, a seven. And then Federico Marchese completing the most passes per 90 minutes with 56. And then Kukolj picked up the competition award for the most assists as well even though he didn't in the club awards. So after this season, we've had a, a couple of players inducted into the overall best 11. So Catlin Kokos has actually made it into the first team of the best 11 after picking up 35 appearances and scoring one goal for us with an average rating of 6.61 this season. And Dinsu Halep has got on the bench for the overall best 11. So in terms of our club vision and expectations, we've got a meeting with the board about it and they, they kind of just want things to stay the same, avoid relegation next season. I'll take it because I've, Pretty sure I tried to change that last time out and it just wouldn't, they, w they wouldn't change it. So we just need to try and use what we've got to try and get a bit higher up in the league, hopefully finish in the top six next season so that we can fight in the Champions playoff for European places. In terms of dynamics, dressing room atmosphere, very good. Managerial support, excellent. We've got three team leaders in Badea, Niga and Van Mullum. Quite a few highly influential players and then a handful of influential players as well, all going well in terms of squad dynamics. And then we'll quickly discuss our plans for next season. I'll just say we're going to have to come back ready to fight to stay up again next season. They love it. They love the relegation battle, these lads. Absolutely love it. And now we'll do some pointless promises that they'll no doubt not care about, but they insist on me doing anyway. I'll say I'm going to strengthen the defence because we are. We've already signed quite a few players in that position, or in those positions, I should say. Um, nobody's really interested in that. I'll... I think that'll do for promises for the time being. Everyone looks positive. Nice way to end the season. And again, whilst we're waiting for the, the league to be fully completed with all the playoffs and everything gone through, we have signed someone else. Zipedro is coming into the squad. He is a centre-back, but can also play at left-back. A very decent left-back. We've scouted him there. He's a four-and-a-half-star left-back, according to my scouts. So God knows what his centre-back uh, star rating is going to be, but tackling a 14 and 17, very nice. Jump and reach of 12 to 15. Beautiful. Zipedro, Portuguese national, is in the bag. He's signed for a free free transfer, end of contract, and he's getting paid £525 a week. So, and a relegation release clause just to keep the board happy. So we'll accept that. And we've got quite a few players coming in, which isn't always a good thing. All these players coming in. I think I've been through a few of them quickly show you a flash of them so you can pause it if you're interested in looking at their attributes that you can see. Um, obviously, a lot of them are just rangers at the minute because they've not actually signed for us. Vincenzo the Summer as well, leaving us. I think I confirmed that, but can't remember. So he's going to Palermo. 
uh, at the end of his contract. He's been with us for for four years now, but um, he is heading into the 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 latter stage of his career. So the first leg of the Casa Liga 1 playoffs to determine the two sides that will be in Casa Liga 1 next season have, has happened. Concordia Chiagina picking up a 3-1 win against FCU Craiova of the second tier, but Voluntari losing 1-0 to Chindia Targovista. We could have a new team in the league. Elsewhere, European places playoff semi-final CFR Cluj defeated Dynamo Bucharest. So they will face Gazmetan Medias to find out who will be in the final European place next season from Romania. The final games of the season have taken place. Voluntari battering Chindia Targovista by six goals to one to confirm that Voluntari will be in Casaliga 1. They'll remain in Casaliga 1 for next season. Concordia Chiajna managing just a 1-1 draw against FCU Craiova, but also confirming that they will stay in Casaliga 1, meaning that there are only two teams coming up to Casaliga 1 from Liga 2 next season. We'll have a look at who they are in a second. But in the European places, playoff final, CFR Cluj confirming their place in the Conference League, I want to say. Yeah, Europa Conference League, it looks like from the rules. And then the two sides that are coming up to Liga 2 are Mia Veni, who I'm not sure we've actually had up in Casa Liga 1. We haven't. So a new team coming up to Liga 1 that we've we've not played in, well, in that division before. We played them when we were in Liga 2 but not in the top tier. So that's nice to see. And then Politenica, Timur Sawara, I'm pretty sure being in Liga 1. Yes, they have. So that is it for another season. I will be back with some, no doubt, more transfers. Maybe. We'll see. We have brought in quite a few players, as I've already said, but we'll definitely be back with the start of next season in the next episode. But that is it for this time. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, Make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel to get all my content when it comes out. Hit the notification bell to stay notified. And I'll see you next time.